Welcome back to Everything Money. We are here as always analyzing stocks, real estate, businesses. Um, we have a beautiful, beautiful Patreon. If you're a Patreon member, we welcome you in. And if you're watching all over the world, thanks for watching our show. I'm Seth, Paul, and Mo. The premise of the show is I bring your normal person questions to a couple of wealthy guys and ask them how we invest, what we should be doing. Today, we're talking about Southwest. Paul, this is one of the earliest videos we did last year. Uh, one of the earliest stock videos we ever did is you professed your love, no pun intended, for this airline company after this massive crash. And uh, you, you. But how did I, how did I, what was the reason why I did that? You showed us the financials behind this company about why you were in love with this. And uh, and we wanted to update this company. Obviously, air travel is back up. Um, the stock had had a rise and now, now a little bit of a fall. We're going to analyze the numbers. We are going to use our eight pillar analysis to look at the price of this stock and is it justified? Is it overpriced? Is it undervalued? Uh, we'll take a look. Paul, give us your thoughts on Southwest, why you've been in love with the Southwest. Well, rem well remember, I haven't been, in, I, I'm no longer in love with the stock price. Why is that? We'll get into that. But when I did fall in love with the stock price last yes, year, my analysis was, okay, airlines are getting hammered, mm -hmm. right? Same thing I did with, car with cruise lines. I like Carnival Cruise. I still own Carnival C Cruise. I want to own more of it. Airlines got hammered. So what I did was I did a quick look into all the airlines and said, okay, which ones are operating the best? Southwest. Which ones are selling for what I perceive to be the best multiples? Southwest. Which ones do I think have the best cash position to get through the COVID, the COVID shutdown? Southwest. Okay. So I sat there and said, is Southwest selling for a reasonable number? It was. The reason I liked them last year was they reported like something like $2.3 billion in net income. That was after 870 million of charges from the 737 MAX issue that occurred mm -hmm. with Boeing, right? So I'm sitting there going, so really this is a $3 billion profit company at the end of the day, right? So I sat there and said, okay, I bought it. $25 on the nose. It just went straight up from there, right? Yes. I think the low was $23.50 or something. Went straight up from there. I wrote covered calls on it and lost my shares at $47 a share, which I was fine with because I thought the company was worth around $50 or $60 a share at that point. So I sat there and said, listen, we're not out of COVID yet. The company has skyrocketed. I'm okay losing the shares at 47. And since then, the shares have gone as high as $64. And now it's currently down to $51 or so until it is July 27th. Okay, so mm -hmm. I like this. Now let's go look at the numbers here. Uh, unfortunately, the eight pillars are probably pretty garbage here. This yes. is our software. And guys, you can't look at the eight pillars for a company like this. And the reason being is they're still coming out of a major, major shutdown and they're just getting back into revenue. If you look at the income statement, for example, look at this revenue growth over the last 10 years. 16.2, 18, 21, collapse, mm -hmm. right? This is bad. So it's gonna be very hard to make money during this time, right? Look down below on net income. 1.93 to negative 1.6. Yeah, Yeah, now they just announced earnings yesterday, was it? I read an article about a month ago that said the CEO had said that he would that, they, that he thought July would be the would be would be back to cash flow positive, which is a great great thing. Has anybody traveled recently? Planes are full. Airlines, airplanes are absolutely. Airports are absolutely insane now. Like I, I picked up a friend of mine from the airport recently. I was there was like three deep. And Cleveland Airport does not have three deep in terms of lines and it was three deep for the departure for the arrivals area where i was picking up a friend it feels yeah it feels like cleveland airport which is not busy like you typically that busy it's more busy now than it was pre-covid correct yeah it's incredible yeah. so maybe there's a lot of pent-up demand that's happening it should help out um, for, um southwest big time well now, i have i have uh, the quarterly if, uh, nate if you want to switch over i have quarterly for this uh, june they just reported right and is this june no this is june paul revenue oh, four great. billion. So four billion dollars in revenue in the last in the last quarter. Mm -hmm. So it's not updated on our financials yet. I don't think. Oh yeah, it is. I'm sorry. Go it's ahead, updated Paul. in our financials here. That's that's part of. So in the last year, guys, they've done eight point six billion, but four billion was in the last quarter. Okay. That, I mean, that's that they're almost back to normal. In previous quarter, in the previous years when they were amazing, doing twenty billion, that's five billion a quarter. So they're almost back to normal right there, right? So what was their profit? Net income of three hundred forty eight million. Last year was the f two. Wait a second. Last year was a full f was the first fiscal year that they lost money in their forty eight years or something like that being yeah, a publicly ever, traded company. Ever. They do a great job managing their their um their what's it called gas their gas spending. They hedge their gas prices very well, and their big philosophy is 
they have all the exact same planes. So they save on manpower and parts because everybody's hyper-focused on knowing their plane inside and out. So it's great. The customer service is great. They don't have the, um, I mean, they're funny people on the, you know, the, uh, yeah. no, our good friend, Rachman, his wife is a flight attendant for Southwest. Oh, is she? Okay. Yeah. Oh, you didn't know that? I knew she was attending. I didn't know which company. Every I time I get in a Southwest flight, flight, I pray, I go, please, Lord. What? Please put April on this flight because I will be hitting that, <laughs> call, that call button, button just... every three seconds. Ding, ding. <laughs> Can you imagine her being on a flight with me? What are your thoughts moving forward with this company, Paul? I think... I think that the company is at 50 or $60. I, I want to look at, let's look at the shares outstanding. Did they issue a lot of shares? It says it's going down, Paul. Well, it's going down, but look at this, Seth. Uh-oh. It was 542 here, and then 563, and then 591. So it was going down, and then because of COVID, issuing shares, which makes sense to get through the, the mess, it's better than issuing debt at times. So, uh, you know, I look at it going, I still think it's a 50 to $60 company at best. So I think it's selling for about what it's worth. Because look at it this way. What's the market cap of the company? 30 bill? It is 30 billion. I think Southwest is a very mature airline, 15 times PE. That makes $2 billion in profit. Actually, I do think it's, um, actually, come to think of it, because remember, I think stabilized, it's a, it's a $3 billion profit business. Stabilized. That makes it 45 billion, which means it has upside here. But before the $50, $60 analysis, there was unknown. So I do have to reevaluate, but I don't think they have as much juice left to the squeeze as before. Does that mean you can't make money off it? No, absolutely not. Unfortunately, our stock analyzer tool, because of how much things have dropped, it's going to yes. be kind of hard. Now, what we can do is go to the stock analyzer tool and do a shorter analysis, three-year analysis. Paul, I watched a video of Warren Buffett's speech from early 2000s. He said that if a capitalist, if, if, if the Wright brothers were trying to fly their plane back in the day 100 years ago, a capitalist would have tried to shoot it down because you can't make any money with airlines. He's a, he really hates airlines. So it's just like car companies and airlines. It's what I talk about with when people say, this industry is growing. You should invest in companies. How many airlines have started in the last 100 years? How much have air travel increased in the last 100 years? It's around 400, Paul. And how much is airline? I mean, 100 years ago, how many people were flying planes? Two people. Yes. Two people, yes. literally. And car business is the same thing. How, there's been thousands of car three companies. I think two or 3,000 yeah, car yeah. 3, Just because an industry is growing doesn't mean everybody in the industry is going to do well. You still need success. In fact, Southwest is the only airline I can think of that's a major airline that has done so well. Now, I did like Alaska Air last year, and I bought them and lost them in a covered call as well, but I was happy with that. I do think there are good airlines out there, but they tend to be smaller ones that really focus on regional flights and are good at co covering their costs. All the big ones like United, Delta, American, it's just so hard. Now, I think Warren Buffett does like Delta. What airline does he have? I think, I think Berkshire has Delta. Delta stock. Yeah. More power to him. I think it's just a tough go at it. Um, but either way... Mo, well, are people trading this? Um, I actually just uh, put a... Uh, message to the bid and ask nation. I like this one. It's a dog stock. So as you can see, it moved through the sweet spot down and now it's just trending sideways. But as it's, the price is slowly declining on you. So what I'm waiting for is this red line to turn up into the sweet spot and grab it. And hopefully I can get it up to this uh, 60 or $65 range or whatever the high Paul was talking about. Um, now let's look at the negative against that. It's still in a downtrend, and this downtrend can continue for a very long time because it dropped below its 200-day moving average uh, just four days ago. And this is going to need a ton of volume to break out to get above the 200-day moving average, 25, 50, and 100-day moving average. So you're going to need a lot of volume bars like these three right here for a very consistent amount of time, probably 15 days in a row or something like that, to break through those levels. This is going to be a tough run for you, but this is a perfect dog stock. Let the stock price keep declining get away from those moving averages, maybe come down to this 40 range, then break up and you'll be, you'll be smooth sailing until you hit that 50 or the 200 day moving average again. If you're drawn to this and you don't have time to follow all this nonsense, you can keep, join the bid and ask and Mo will tell you the exact day you get the golfing candlesticks to start I, putting money in the Southwest. Go ahead, Paul. I have great news. Go ahead. This is why we always reevaluate stocks. So remember, when I first did the stock, I thought they could potentially make 3 billion stabilized. Go on. Their revenue is down a lot. So... What, if, we're, if you're assuming they're cash flow positive from here on forward, okay, and they're going to do 30, 40, and 50% revenue growth for the next, because they're only at eight and a half billion right now. So getting 30% revenue growth would take them to $22 billion revenue, which is above where they were, just slightly above where they were before. Share chains staying the same or buying back 2%. I'm increasing their profit margin to 8, 10, and 12%. Because if you remember, the 737 max issue cost them $870 million in the pre 2019, right? So I want to add that money back in as part of the margin. It actually might even still be low. 
12, 15, 18. Seth, look at this. What do you got down there? I had the stock potentially being a buy. Come on. Potentially. Now, that's assuming a couple of things here. 40% revenue growth, I don't think is realistic. So that's where I sit there and say, I might want to adjust that over the next three years. Because 8.5, that seat, well, maybe it is. 33, $23 billion. A couple airlines have problems. They gain market share. Is that a possibility? Sure. Is it realistic? I don't know. It takes it to $23 billion in, in revenue, which is with a lot of pent up demand. If that's possible, this might be a buy here, even at these prices. Me? Actually, you know what, Mo? I might be looking at puts on Southwest at like low 40s. It's actually not a bad idea. So this is what we do. This is how we're doing this. When you sit there and say, this guy didn't, yeah, I didn't do any research ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm doing the numbers going, wait a second, this actually doesn't seem unreasonable. Now my job is to go further and see, do I really believe they're cash flow positive? Do I believe the CEO when he says that? The thing I like about Southwest is they tend to hire honorable people. That's been a very big culture thing there. Absolutely. It's very big on the culture there. It's about honor and all that stuff. So I look at it going, okay, if that's the case, this could be a, uh, a good buy here in $51. What you're watching is Paul's actual analysis of a stock that he was doing before we even made this show. And so if you'd like to see more of this, this is the point of the show. Paul, I love seeing your thought process, especially with blind stocks. We, we, we do very little due diligence on this company. We look at it now, and then now we can take the next steps to see if we want to continue our investment in Southwest. So um, you picked a couple of bangers last fall, Paul, with CCL and Southwest. You were very adamant about it, and they certainly turned out. And uh, this is another interesting company for sure. So that is our take. Join the Patreon. I, we're certain, we're certain you'll love it. And we're also um, certain you'll love it too. Certain, certain, whatever you want to be. Um, we'll see you there. We'll see you in the Discord chat. Fondle a thumbs up. See you next video. Thanks so much. <laughs>